Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome. We have a very large group of participants on this call today, and we thank you very much for joining us. Today's presentation explains how Global Platform, the technical standards body, serves to outline the privacy and security benefits that secure elements bring for the protection of web apps. This webinar, designed for technical experts and application developers, will also offer insight into Global Platform's web API to access secure elements. Hi, my name is Kevin Gillick. I'm the Executive Director of Global Platform, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to two additional and very knowledgeable speakers who will share this webinar with me, both from full member Jamalto, Virginia Galindo, and Olivier Padney. Welcome. After I provide a brief introduction, I will hand things over to Virginie to discuss secure components, followed by Olivier, who will speak more specifically about Global Platform's web API for accessing secure elements. Then a little later, just before answering your questions, I'll spend a few minutes to provide an overview of the organization and some valuable resources that you can tap into. So to submit your questions during this live webinar, just use the question box that you'll find on the webinar dashboard. It's on the top right of your screen, and you can open the question box by clicking on the orange arrow tab. Then type your question and hit send. Now our goal is to answer all of the questions at the end of this presentation, if time permits. For those who will be watching this as a recorded webinar through Global Platform TV on YouTube, we will provide an email address at the end of this presentation where you can submit your questions. Okay, with these housekeeping matters now addressed, let's get started. First, I want to take a moment to share some information about the landscape we are operating in today. For service providers that are developing value-added services, this landscape has become increasingly complex. Fueling that complexity is the sheer number and variety of connected devices which some sources estimate to be as many as 50 billion by the year 2020. And as the number of devices grows, new ecosystems are connected, involving new and different actors, all of whom need to manage connectivity and ensure security for devices and services used in this expanding landscape. One particular growth trend is the use of web applications as they offer a number of benefits over on-device apps including the ability to deploy across multiple operating systems and quicker and simpler app development. With growth comes opportunity, but this growing connectivity landscape also poses some unique challenges. So it stems to reason that if the number of connected devices is growing, so too is the available to attack surface. This increasingly works to the advantage of the hacker and the attacker as they only need to find one vulnerable point to succeed in their attack. And one often cited outcome of a successful attack is damage to product, service, and brand reputation. Stakeholders need to protect their products and brands from these attacks, and hardware is the best way to do this. Consumers are also becoming more and more aware of the threats to their privacy and personal data and are therefore expecting higher and higher security assurances. And as we all know, it's not just the apps that are under attack. It is also devices and networks. Devices connected to a network may not be the specific subject of an attack, but a means for the attacker to penetrate a network. This is why hardware and endpoint security is so important and why we are hosting this webinar today as we wish to present here a solution to this particular challenge. For a solution, we can look to device apps, which have been using hardware to deliver privacy, security, and authentication for many years for applications such as mobile wallet, secure email, and enterprise authentication. But until recently, web apps did not have access to the same hardware and the services that it offers. And this is why Global Platform has been working to develop and launch its web API to access secure hardware, and in this case, the secure element. Developers can now leverage hardware on the device to secure their web apps and do so in a standardized way. 
This is important as this opens the potential for the developer of a service to reach the mass market, developing once and reaching a range of device types offered by different suppliers. Virginia is now going to take us on a closer look of this hardware, secure elements, and endpoint security. Virginia? Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, indeed, we're going to have a look at the um, uh, secure elements with the different flavors and their different use cases. But first, uh, let's come back a little bit on the details on how services are deployed today. So while deploying some online services, you might find uh, you might find a part which is going to be on the server side and the client part and the client part is going to run on the user device and it's important for the service provider to know uh, that their applications and data are secure end-to-end -end against attacks as Kevin has mentioned. Uh, so on the server side uh, this can be ensured by the backend, by protecting the backend, and it is usually in a controlled environment. But on the device side, on the client side, this is where the service provider will have to have more information about the, the device. Is it an unprotected device or is it a, a protected device? Does it provide some security and privacy, yes or no? So. Um, this is just a very simplistic view of the problem because uh, actually, as uh, Kevin has mentioned, uh, the world is getting uh, connected. Uh, each user has a lot of devices and services can run on different type of services. You can have mobile TV, vending machines, PC, connected watch. And uh, so it's important to note that this is not limited to smartphone and that service provider have to have confidence in any of the connected device. So how can they get that? A possible way uh, is to have an end-to-end -end solution. And basically, this is where a global platform is, is working uh, to make sure that service provider can, can have a reliable deployment of application. So end-to-end, -end, what does it mean? It means that the connection is relying on the presence of trusted endpoints. So in that case, the security and the privacy can be ensured through the delivery of the apps and services. So as you can see on the diagram, the first endpoint is a secure cloud-based server, which is going to be on the service provider backend system. And the consumer will have in his hand the other uh, secure endpoint. And uh, in that case, you have the addition of a secure component. So as you can see on the device, the secure component can be also leveraged by the secure web application, which is a topic of our webinar today. So let's have a look at, this, at, at what is actually a secure element. Um, First, um, one should know that most of the devices are integrated or uh, today or are capable of communicating with a secure element. So devices like smartphone that you can see on the left of the, of the slide, uh, they do have a secure element like SIM cards or UICC as we call it or embedded secure element. PCs can also easily access to secure elements. Uh, with different form factors. So in that case, on the right of the slide, you can see that you have a, a smart card which is connected thanks to an NFC um, protocol. You have a USB token that can be integrated into the PC or a wearable device also uh, could um, uh, discuss and communicating with uh, the PC. So all of those secure elements can offer security to the main device, like to smartphone or to PC, because they are based on secure chip, meaning that they are providing a secure operating system and a secure storage. So application running inside uh, will be, uh, could be trusted applications. Uh, so Global Platform has been managing uh, this kind of security uh, during many years and mobile applications have been able to benefit from that security offered by Secure Element. So and this is the topic of the webinar. It makes sense that the web application uh, do benefit from it too. 
Mm, let's get into the details um, of the, the type of secure element, different form factors, and also, you know, the use cases that could be uh, usually associated. So secure element, they come with a different form factor and they might be able to address different business models and they do have different uh, deployment um, mechanism. So you can see uh, for each of the type of secure element, some specific attributes that, that makes them special and examples where they can be used uh, most of the time. This is not a kind of strict or exhaustive list, it's just to give you uh, examples. Uh, so, firstly, you have the uh, SIM card, USB token, micro USD, U uh, micro SD, sorry, and what they have in common is that they are all removable, meaning that the user is in control of connecting or not this secure element to the main device. So the kind of uh, usage that can be done thanks to those removable secure elements is for example secure email so that you can make sure that you are ciphering your, um, your email. You can also uh, use it to uh, have uh, OTP, oh sorry, one-time password tokens. Another technology uh, which allows to have online authentication with a second factor is a FIDO and uh, uh, there is a, a well-known technology called U2F and which is based on USB keys, for example. The second type of secure element is an embedded secure element. What does it mean to be embedded? It means that it's soldered. Uh, the, the main use case is being soldered in a mobile device and this is uh, where you will find all the uh, OEM Pay solutions. So you should understand like the Apple Pay, Samsung Pay solutions could be implemented thanks to a secure chip um, soldered in the mobile device. Transport ticketing is also another uh, type of use case, just like another flavor of FIDO technology named UAF could also be um, implemented. Uh, the last type of secure element is a smart card. What makes it different is that smart card um, is going to be a, uh, is going to have a plastic body and it can be connected with a main device either via uh, NFC uh, contactless solution or with a contact solution. So this is where you will find, uh, for example, the corporate badges. So when you want to connect to your intranet, you might use your badge. Uh, you have some national ID also, which are in this form factor and then can also be uh, used to access, for example, to e-government services and banking card, of course, do have this kind of format. So these technologies have been extremely successful um, and uh, we, can, uh, we can see that the, the secure chip market has grown significantly in the recent years. Uh, so the global platform um, uh, organization qualified more than 150 secure element products as an example and there, there is a 15.7 billion secure element which are based on global platform spe specification um, during 2010 and 2015. So on the top of this, members of Global Platform are reporting considerable growth uh, across traditional and non-traditional markets and this is particularly true in the IoT space. So we have seen that this technology is robust, uh, it is also universally available, so let's look at the benefit. Why would a service provider use a secure element? So there are here on this slide some benefits and again some use cases. Uh, let's maybe have a look at the, um, the specific benefits uh, which, are, which are coming together with this technology. So in a secure element, uh, there is this capability to have application isolation, meaning that several applications running in a single secure element um, will be isolated and this is allowing the service provider to put uh, their application in the secure element and making sure that no other application residing in the same secure element is going to harm uh, their own application. 
So as a consequence, uh, this allows a um, secure element issuer to monetize a secure element, vending the memory and processing to uh, several uh, service providers. That's the first benefit. The second benefit is related to strong authentication. Um, all secure elements are coming with the capability to store credential and answer mathematical challenges with integrity. So this uh, makes them very um, attracting for performing some, some authentication operations. The secure storage is the third one. Uh, so secure components are tamper resistant. It means that no one can access the memory and read the secret which are stored inside, either with software attacks or with hardware attacks, like opening the chip and trying to read the memory. Uh, robust cryptography. Um, so this is also uh, depending on the on the implementation of the vendor, but um, most of the secure chip they do implement some robust robust cryptography with no risk to have uh, integrity failure in their implementation. And lastly, because secure element, uh, when be, once being uh, rolled out uh, in the market, uh, might need to be updated. Most of them, at least the one being compliant with global platform, do offer a capability to have remote administration. So you don't have a kind of freezing set, or sorry, frozen set of applications in your secure element. You can still update it um, with security. So uh, you can see also some user story where the secure element is used with, with a benefit to reinforce the security of the service provider. So um, use cases can be a payment, inserting a corporate badge into a PC reader. So we have already covered some of them, but that's, that's really the main usage uh, and the reality of the usage of the secure element. So um, you can see uh, that, that it could be interesting to have web application getting benefits uh, of all the, the, this access to secure element. And this uh, access is enabled through API. And we will see that Global Platform has a good experience uh, with a number of APIs. Uh, so let's start first uh, with so if you go to the next slide, let's have a look at the three uh, APIs uh, which are related to secure element that uh, Global Platform successfully issued. So the first one is named the TEE API uh, for accessing secure elements. Uh, Trust execution environment, which is uh, the, the TEE acronym, are actually isolated environment running in a mobile uh, device. And uh, the, the, virtu the merits of this uh, TEE is to allow to have trusted application running inside, trusted in a way that their code is not going to be modified and their secret will be kept secret as long as there is no physical attack. So that's already a very interesting level of, of security. And uh, there is uh, an API which has been designed by Global Platform, which gives uh, those trusted applications access to secure elements, uh, meaning that there can be uh, a companionship, let's say, between the trusted execution environment and the secure elements. So you can, you could uh, distribute your part of your execution in the TE in a trusted application and other part of your execution in a secure element. So this API, this TEE API for accessing secure elements is available in most of the NFC-based Android uh, devices and in the Windows Phone devices. So uh, there is a second, um, a second API which is designed by Global Platform, which is an open mobile API for accessing secure elements. So in that case, uh, it's rich applications running in the device, in the smartphone, which will be able to access to secure elements. So um, it means that any application running in a device may be able to use transportation uh, application and so on. So this uh, API, just like the previous one, is available publicly on the URL which is indicated here. And you will get the slides. Uh, and uh, it is also available in most of the NFC and Windows Phone devices. 
And the last API, which is uh, quite new and, and which uh, we are going to detail very soon, is a web API for accessing secure elements. So let's have a look at the context of, this, of the creation of this uh, API. So uh, before I pass to Olivier, uh, I would like to make a very high level introduction of this API. So the objective of a global platform was to have the web application benefiting from similar access to secure element as Android application or trusted application could. So in order to address broad community, Global Platform has been creating uh, a working group in GitHub uh, with some public access and the plan was to answer to the market expectation uh, which was what about having um, capability to generate a signature securely from a web app? Why not storing my credential um, from the web app into a token that would be tamper resistant? Or why not even accessing a banking application and pay uh, from a web app? So as you can see with the web API, web apps can now benefit from the same security services as device apps. And I'm sure that you are expecting this moment where Olivier is going to detail for you what's inside this API. Thank you, Virginie. So yes, now that we've seen the, um, the context and the objective, uh, we will go into some technical aspect of the specification. So what you see here is uh, an outline of uh, the full system using the Web API for secure element, which is the green part, the green layer uh, in the middle. And uh, <clears throat> as you can see, the web applications, which are uh, in blue uh, on the top of the figure, will not directly use the new web API for secure elements because this API is a low level, it's a transport level API and uh, it does not really fit uh, with the usual abstraction uh, levels that uh, are usually handled by web application. So uh, it, instead it is expected that uh, web runtime, typically a web browser, will provide higher level secure services on top of the web API for secure elements. And this way the access to, uh, to the web API for secure element would be restricted by the web runtime so that only uh, such privileged services can use it. And uh, W3C, who is in charge of the standardization of the open web platform can specify such privileged uh, services and actually there is already a W3C community group working on some uh, use cases. This community group is called Hardware-Based Secure Services and uh, I invite you to participate to the discussions. Uh, the Web API for SE implementation will use whatever secure element inter faces the, uh, that is available on the underlying system. So for instance on a desktop computer it could be PCSC uh, interface and on mobile uh, it could be uh, the open mobile API OMAPI interface that uh, Virginie mentioned earlier and then uh, you would have uh, contact or contactless uh, communication with, uh, with the secure elements. Uh, so let's have a look at this uh, the transport <coughs> the transport uh, uh, API the transport level API that is uh, defined in the, the, the specification. Uh, so it has a similar design to the OMAP specification, the Open Mobile API, uh, and this OMAP specification was defined for read mobile application but uh, we can map the same concept for web application. So it defines a hierarchy of classes that give access to transport level operation to communicate with a secure element uh, application. A secure element manager gives access to the readers that are connected to, to the system and it informs about the presence or not of uh, a secure element in each reader and once a, re uh, a secure element is detected you can open a session to the secure elements and then you can open a channel 
to send commands to, uh, to a specific application inside the secure element. To provide best performances, uh, this API is uh, asynchronous so that operation do not freeze the web application. And for this, the API is using the, the promise object that was introduced in ECMAScript uh, version 6 as illustrated in, uh, in the example that you see now. Uh, so this example is a JavaScript web application that is using the web API for secure elements. So you can see uh, some uh, of the operation uh, of, the, of the web API, such as uh, secure element manager on present, reader, open session, etc. Uh, so this uh, sample code is using um, uh, is getting the version of a FIDO U2F secure element authenticator and it is using raw messages format as defined in U2F specification, FIDO U2F specification. Uh, so what you can see that most of, of the operations are asynchronous such as for example the open session um, method, the line reader dot open session uh, calls an asynchronous method and this is uh, these asynchronous methods are chained using promise objects and they, they, the promise object is returning uh, a successful response which is handled in the then method and uh, those then method can be chained to, uh, to simplify the, the, the writing of such a, a program and then you also have the catch method in order to uh, handle the, the failing cases, the failing execution results. So le let's uh, uh, come back on the access control. Uh, I said that uh, the, the web API for secure element should be uh, controlled and that this uh, should guarantee that only authorized applications are granted access to this API. Of course, uh, secure elements already have some internal protection um, mechanism to control access, such as uh, PIN codes or secure messaging. However, uh, it's uh, also possible to prevent, completely prevent access, uh, access, access to, the, to the secure elements from the rich uh, device itself, from the device itself. And Global Platform defined an access control mechanism for this, which is called Secure Element Access Control. And it defines how the card and an access control enforcer on the device cooperate to block access to the secure element. This is based on access rules, which are provided by the secure element itself and the rules define which application can send which command to which secure element application. So this mechanism can be used in the scope of web applications and in this context the application identifier which is a reference in access rules is the origin of the web application. The origin, the web origin is the scheme, the domain name and the port of the web application. And in order to format the GPE access control specification, this origin is hash, hashed to form the, the application ID. In addition to this, uh, the, the specification defined that there should be additional protection. Uh, in particular, access should only be permitted for HTTPS hosted applications, so using a TLS a secure communication and only with a valid certificate. So we've seen that uh, service providers from mobile to uh, IoT fields are expecting uh, web services to support secure elements in order to deploy their services using the open web platform. We're excited to, uh, to say that uh, Web API for Secure Element is now available to enable privacy and security for their applications. And please go to GitHub and check this new specification. And if you're interested in uh, using it, 
please participate and contribute to the W3C discussion to explain your use cases and make sure your requirements are cover, covered by the upcoming W3C specification. Now I'll pass back to Kevin for a short overview of Global Platform's broader work before we take some questions. Thank you so much. Um, I want to just go through some five slides very quickly, and I promise that I'll, I will go through them quickly so that we can get to your questions. Um, these five slides are intended to give you a quick glance into Global Platform and point you to some of the resources that may be of interest to you. Um, for those of you who have been in this industry for some time now, you can recall when first efforts to use smart card technology to elevate security for applications such as payment and identity first took place. The industry faced a challenge at that time, however, in that smart card providers each offered different operating systems and different ways of personalizing applications and securing keys and application critical data. This created barriers to interoperability, scalability, multi-sourcing, and a host of other challenges. So Global Platform was formed at that time to address these matters, and the technology that we have created has not only been widely adopted over the years, but has been shown to be adaptable to the fast pace at which technology changes and evolves. As we all know, services are now going digital, and recent years have shown their proliferation on mobile devices, and now the same global platform technology is logically extensible to an emerging world of connected cars, smart wearables, smart homes, smart TVs, and the like. And global platform specifications are as timely and relevant today as they were 17 years ago, and perhaps even more so. When I refer to global platform specifications, I'm really referring to three specific areas where we have taken the lead in the industry to standardize secure component technology. And one of those technologies has already been mentioned today by Virginia, and that's being the secure element. But Global Platform members have also developed specifications to standardize the trusted execution environment, or the TEE, which as many of you may know is a secure area in the main processor of a smartphone or any connected device that ensures that the sensitive data is stored and processed and protected in an isolated and trusted environment. And our members have also developed messaging specifications. An example of that would be our messaging specification for the management of mobile NFC services. In that specification, we define the exchange of messages for performing the delivery and the post-issuance management of mobile NFC services. Now, what's important to note is that the global platform specifications are not only designed to serve just one market sector. They are, in fact, agnostic to the market and therefore are equally relevant across market sectors. Some of those are depicted here at the bottom of the slide. I've referred to our membership base, uh, Global Platform members, and there are more than 100 companies represented here. These companies collectively have over 2,700 individuals who are engaged in our various technical committees, working groups, and task force initiatives. And our members are very strong advocates of working closely with other industry associations with the goal of staying well connected to them and working closely with them. We do this to ensure that our global platform standards truly reflect the requirements of the marketplace and that they remain aligned with the work product of other industry bodies. Okay, finally, my last slide. I invite you to visit our website at www.globalplatform.org because here's where you're going to find all sorts of freely available information, including the specifications and configurations themselves, as well as the compliance and certification programs that are associated with them. You will also find instructional materials like white papers, interviews, guides, and videos, all of which are designed to be educational in nature. You'll also be able to find information about seminars, workshops, and training events that we host on various topics and in various regions of the world. Okay, uh, those are my five slides I wanted to share with you, and I hope I kept my promise to go through them quickly so that we can get to your questions now.